Good afternoon, QualiMed and friends of QualiMed. Welcome to our webinar for today entitled Colorectal Cancer, What You Need to Know. To avoid distractions during the lecture, kindly follow these instructions. Keep your microphone on mute, turn off your video camera. If you have questions, send to us by typing in the chat box. We will answer your questions during the Q&A session. If you're watching via Facebook Live, kindly send your questions through the comment section on the video stream. Thank you and let's enjoy the knowledge sharing today. Okay, so to start the ball rolling, let us call our very energetic Chief Operating Officer of Qualimed Hospital, Tanawan, Mr. Edwin G. Magsino. Sir Max. Thank you, Vanji. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, we are, scheduled, we are scheduled to officially launch a DMMC program focused on gastrointestinal diseases. And to kick this off, we are very fortunate to be here virtually and get this opportunity to be part of this webinar on colorectal cancer, what we need to know. According to DOH, colorectal cancer is the third most common cancer in the Philippines for both men and women. And in terms of census, in 2019, there were over 116,000 new cases and 51,000 deaths and the numbers are on an increasing trend. Helen Vela, Rio Diaz, Cory Aquino, and Pope John Paul II are, were only few of the notable people that were diagnosed with colorectal cancer. However, colorectal cancer is a type of cancer that can be prevented, screened, and cured if it is detected in an earlier stage through screening. Today's webinar is highly important because it will provide you a vast amount of knowledge on how to avoid and beat or manage this type of cancer. Again, thank you for attending this webinar and allow me to reiterate, colorectal cancer can be prevented, screened, and cured if it is detected early. Thank you very much and uh, um, learn the rest of the webinar series. Thank you. Thank you, sir, Max. Um, and now let me introduce our moderator for this afternoon session. So she is a graduate of Doctor of Medicine from De La Salle Health Sciences Institute. She had her residency training from the Department of Rehabilitation Medicine from the Veterans Memorial Medical Center. She had her fellowship in re or neuro rehabilitation at the Tang Tok Seng Hospital in Singapore. Qualimed and friends of Qualimed, let us all welcome the Assistant Director for Medical Affairs of Qualimed Hospital Tanawan, Dr. Maria Elena Lourdes Tan. Doc Marla, good afternoon. Good afternoon to um, everyone. No, we welcome you to this. Um, webinar now on our one of our <clears throat> what's it our IPUs that we want to promote no so um, just to start no uh, maybe I will introduce first our distinguished speaker for this afternoon can they share for the slides ma'am okay so our um, speaker holds a lot of positions, no? as you can see on the screen. Um, currently, he is vice chairman of the Medical Advisory Council of the Healthway Cancer Center. He is a regent of the Philippine College of Surgeons, director, PCS Commission on Cancer. He is also president of the ERAS Society Philippines. He is co-director of the Medical Advisory Council Healthway Cancer Care Center. He is also the general manager of the Ayala Group Employees Care Center. He is a 
clinical associate professor at the University of the Philippines, College of Medicine, Philippine General Hospital. I'm sure there are a lot more achievements of Dr. Rojas, but I will not, <laughs> let's not take much of your time. So may I please turn the, or give the floor to our speaker, Manuel Francisco T. Rojas. Thank you, Dr. Ratan. I would like uh, to take this opportunity to, uh, as I share my screen, um, I'd like to congratulate uh, DMMC uh, under the leadership of Mags and Conrad um, for this relaunch of the GI Center. And uh, I think we, it's good that we start off talking about colorectal cancer, which is one of the main um, deliveries of the uh, service deliveries of the um, GI Center uh, uh, as, we, as we inaugurate this launch. Um, so I, I'm, I'm sharing my screen now. This is the start of my lecture. I, this lecture was really intended for lay uh, people, for co our corporate clients um, who, who want to learn more about colorectal cancer and screening in particular. So uh, I hope uh, this will be enlightening for those at that level. For the doctors, I'm, I'm here to just talk to you about how this all ties in with, your, with the program of um, HPI, as well as the cancer hospital and your hospital, and as well as your practice. So let's start. Uh, this is the outline of the presentation. I, I, I will go from uh, the colorectal cancer facts and uh, and uh, some of the questions of whether it's curable or uh, risks of cancer, symptoms, staging, uh, uh, down the line. You know? and, and then as I said, I'll tie it into uh, what we're trying to launch in DMMC with regard to the GI Center. Um, worldwide, uh, colorectal cancer is also the third most common cancer and the second leading cause of death. Uh, there are approximately 1.9 million new cases every year with almost a million deaths. It's also varied in, 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 um, in the number. No? It's the number one cancer in European Union, in Singapore and Malaysia, and number two in most other countries. And I'll talk a little more about that later when you see how it spreads. No? Um, in fact, it's not we used to think colorectal cancer was a European disease or a white, white man's disease because it was the U.S., was the, the as Europe. But in, even in Asia, uh, there are very high numbers in China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Japan, South Korea, Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, and Malaysia. And as I mentioned, it's number one in Singapore, number one in Malaysia. And if you look at it, that, that means it's not just a white man's disease, it's also a disease seen in Asians. And so what is the common denominator that makes colorectal cancer either number one or number two? And remember, we're, we're at number three. We're not yet at number two or number one in the Philippines. And yet, why are these countries that are enumerated uh, here in this slide at number one or number two? What is the common denominator? We used to think it was diet, a Western diet, but obviously these Asian countries don't, don't consume a lot of Western diet. So if you look at it, the common denominator is number one, these are highly developed countries. And you might add the more developed the country is, tomata as um, incidents of colorectal cancer. Could it be the food? It's not just Western versus Asian, but probably the refined foods that a modern society has, but perhaps the explanation is more simple. In well-developed countries, more people grow older and the older its population, the higher the risk for cancers, especially colorectal cancer. And therefore this might be the real reason why we see, we see a lot more old people in these well-developed countries. As I said, in the Philippines, it's still the third most common cancer. Uh, there are 116 new cases per year with 51,000 deaths. Um, I won't talk about uh, the U.S., 
but uh, the lifetime risk of developing colorectal cancer is 4.3% for men and 4% for women. So almost equal men and women get it. And, and that's why it's number one in Singapore because their breast cancer rates are not so high. Well, colorectal cancer hits men and women. Our breast cancer rates are one of the highest in Asia. And it's still, it, at, at the moment, it's number one in the Philippines. So really interesting data also from the things of breast cancer. They've mentioned the famous people who've gotten colorectal cancer. Uh, let me just show you this slide, which I made many years ago. These are the famous people at that time that got colorectal cancer from Filipinos to foreigners. So for the Filipinas, you can recognize um, Helen Bella. I don't know the younger audience, you remember her, Cory Aquino, Rio Diaz. But here, Pope John Paul got colorectal cancer. Some of the fam these famous actors, President Reagan got colorectal cancer. The one who, who drew Piazza, uh, Schultz, also got colorectal cancer. But if you look at all of these famous people in this slide, the Filipinas were all diagnosed late, stage four, and they all died from colorectal cancer. Well, the rest of these uh, famous individuals were diagnosed early and, and did not die from colorectal cancer. So quality of care, screening, early diagnosis matters. And obviously something is wrong when even our most, uh, well, shall we say, um, maybe most famous or most uh, wealthy of uh, Filipinos still get late stage disease and die from it. So the question is, if you can glint from the light, is colorectal cancer curable? Because why are some people living and some people are not? And uh, just for your understanding, uh, just to clarify what we mean by the colon and the rectum, the colon is the largest part of the intestine. It's called the large intestine. This is the colon. It's a tube-like organ that protects the small intestines to the rectum. The rectum is the last part of the colon, and it serves as a passageway of the colon to the anus where stools are passed out. So when we talk about colorectal cancer, we talk about cancers that can be either in any part of the colon or in the rectum. What are the risks for colorectal cancer? Well, here are some of the, 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 the data, no? being overweight, or having obesity, not being physically active, red meat and processed food, smoking and drinking, family history of colorectal cancer. And when we talk about family history, if you've had two or more direct relatives uh, who've had the colorectal cancer, the risk in the family increases. Racial and ethnic background. Uh, some of the data seems to point out that blacks seem to have a higher rate. Having type 2 diabetes is a risk also. But the most important risk is age. Whatever we do, whether we eat healthy or not, whether we exercise or not, whether we are have diabetes or not, are physically active or not, as long as we reach the age of 45 or above, we are at risk for colorectal cancer. And that's the biggest element. 85% of patients who get colorectal cancer had no family history. The only risk they had was age. Only 15% had strong family history of colorectal cancer. What are the symptoms of colorectal cancer? Uh, well, siempre, if you have a change in bowel movement, whether it's diarrhea or constipation, or that parang hindi patapos, uh, the bowels to does not seem to empty completely. Um, if your stools become thin or narrow, or there's abdominal pain or discomfort, bleeding is a very important symptom. You don't bleed massively, but you will notice there's red blood when you pass your stools. Uh, and, and, and that is an important sign because many of our countrymen think it's hemorrhoids automatically and don't rush to seek uh, diagnosis, they, they tend to um, keep it all to themselves for the longest time, no? which is why we end up seeing things late. So any bleeding should um, arise suspicion. No? Weakness, tiredness or fatigue, unexplained anemia or iron deficiency, and weight loss with no explanation. I'm not dieting, but I'm losing weight. 
when a person has uh, colorectal cancer, it's important to know the stage. And the staging system we use is T for tumor, N for node, and metastasis is M, T and M, where we look at the tumor and see how deep it's grown into the intestinal wall. We look to see if there are lymph nodes around it uh, as a sign that it might be beginning to spread. And then we check if the patient has other signs that it has spread to other parts of the body, like the liver, the lungs, or elsewhere. So that's what we use, the TNM staging. Uh, and this is how we use it. For instance, if it's stage zero, the, the tumor is only growing very small. It hasn't invaded the, really the wall yet. There's no metastasis or no lymph nodes. That's stage zero. If it's stage one, again, still early, uh, it's grown a little into the wall, pero there are no lymph nodes and there are no metastases. There's stage two. Uh, it's, it's crossed the wall, but again, no lymph nodes and no metastases. I won't go into the, uh, the, more, the other state stage two categories because you don't need to really remember that. The thing is, stage three, aside from invading most of the wall, there are lymph nodes here. There are lymph nodes already that have been affected. No distant metastasis, meaning hindi pa kumakalit sa ibang organs, pero may, may kulani na sa paligid na positive. Yan stage three. Okay? And uh, stage three A, may stage three B, uh, okay, and yan ang mga kulani, no? but may stage 3C, I won't go into the details of that, pang pathologist na ito, but then we go into stage 4, no? and sa stage 4, may kalat na sa ibang organs, so maliban sa may kulani, meron na rin sa liver, or meron sa lungs, or meron sa ibang parte ng chan, kumalat na, okay, but I'd like to point out, merong stage 4A, kung saan yung kalat ay iisa lang organ, kunyari sa liver, okay, or dito sa bladder, or meron tayong stage 4B, kung saan yung kalat ay talagang kalat na kalat na, whether sa lungs, marami sa lungs, marami sa liver, na hindi na maoperahan. Sinasabi ko lang yung ito uh, about stage 4A and stage 4B, kasi... When I started in my career as a surgeon, iisa lang stage 4. And halos lahat yan uh, had very poor outcomes. No? Wala pang 10% ang nagsasurvive ng 5 years. Ngayon, kahit may, uh, because of good treatment, meron ng stage 4A and 4B. And ang kaibahan yan, yung 4A, kagaya na sinabi ko, ilan lang ang kalat. Pwede pang operahan at yung survival, gumaganda pag naoperahan at na-treat. Yung 4B, yun ang medyo tagilid pa rin. But it's interesting. We can also find 4A patients that we can sometimes cure. Okay, so here, kumalat sa peritoneum, minsan sa liver. So uh, balik sa question, is colorectal cancer curable? And I think you all know the answer is yes. It is. Miski na si Trump ang magsabi, it is. And if you look at this um, slide, it's an old slide I used to have in my teaching as I went all over the country trying to improve colorectal cancer services. China and Japan and Korea have survival rates more than 60%. Sorry, 60%. And uh, abang sa atin, sa Pilipinas, Indonesia, India, less than 14, 40%. So, Karamihan ng mga pasyente natin in the Philippines, in Indonesia, India, Malaysia, Thailand, 60% of them will die from that colorectal cancer while well, 40% will survive. Pero pagdating sa ibang bansa, more than 50% will survive. So differences in outcomes means care, the quality of care matters, and that in, with good quality of care, you can achieve a cure with survivals above 60%. And yun ang goal dapat natin. Here is the five-year survival rate of colon rectal ca cancer as of now, internationally. Colon cancer, 64%. Rectal cancer, 67%. Mas mataas pa ang rectal cancer survival. Galing, no? And that's because 
Actually, sa rectal cancer, mga highly specialized teams na nag-treat na ito, hindi lang yung ilan lang na uh, doktor-doktor na paisa ito. Isa. Uh, not like in colon, dahil it's an easier treatment, no need for radiotherapy, uh, surgery is easier, minsan diretso na ang treatment without need for a, a strong team. Okay, remember those figures, 60%, 64% survival abroad. This is the survival of the Fili uh, colorectal cancer in the Philippines in an old slide, 2005 pa. Pero tingnan mo ang survival, 47% sa colon, 19% sa rectum. Mas mababa pa kaysa sa abroad, but mababa ang rectum compared sa colon. 20, mga almost 20% ang survival. Imagine, sa colon, almost 50%. So again, this reflects the quality of care. We have poorer quality of care sa rectum. Uh, pag rectal cancer ang gausap. But our colon cancer rates are not great either. And if you look at this slide, five-year survivals in GI cancers, comparing Americans versus Filipino-Americans living in the U.S. And, and then Filipinos living in the Philippines, Kung titignan nyo yung liver and stomach, halos pareho, hindi masyado nakakalayo ang survival rates ng mga Amerikano, Filipino-Americans, and Filipino. Pero if you look at colorectal cancer, yung survival rate ng U.S. citizen, yung Americano, ay almost the same as a Filipino living in the U.S. Above 60%. Pero tingnan mo, yung Filipinos na nagkira ka, <laughs> Tayo-tayo to, nandito pa rin sa Pilipinas, kahit anong eleksyon. 40% lang ang survival rate at this time, 2010. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Quality of care matters. It matters in survival. Okay, so the Americans, as well as Filipino Americans, are getting better quality of care because their survival is around, it's above 60%. Not so in the Philippines. And Improvements in, in, in cancer care have actually really improved survival. And the key areas in the battle against cancer which have improved uh, survival are community-based screening, the kind of treatment we give, whether it's chemotherapy, radiotherapy, or surgery, a team approach to the treatment, surveillance, aggressive treatment of metastatic disease. Hindi lang suko ng suko lang for get stage four. And you can see colorectal cancer survive a death from colorectal cancer is going down okay, because of better care. And if you look at it, ang tindi ng evidence or colorectal cancer screening really has strong evidence that it reduces mortality. And six trials on 442,000 subjects reduce color cancer, colorectal cancer mortality by 23%. And uh, it's so very strong data na if you do colorectal cancer screening in Batangas, 23% less Batangueños will die from colorectal cancer. That's what the data is showing. Here's an older data also on chemotherapy in stage 4 cancers. And if you look at that slide, in stage 4 ito, in the 1960s, pag wala pang chemotherapy, hanggang 6 months lang ang mga pasyente ang nabubuhay. And then they succumb to the disease. Pagdating ng 1970s to 1980s, may gamot na sila yung all the trusted 5FU. And they were able to reach survival rates of 12, 12, 12 months, one year. Nang dinagdagan nila yung Lucoverin, lampas one year. And then with, with the other ones, um, Ironetecan, Folfox, uh, Oxalid Platin, Polfiri or Aridatakan also, we were hitting survival rates of around two years for stage four patients. And then now with targeted therapy, to add to that, we have broken the two-year barrier. And I have personally seen stage four patients living five years, sometimes beyond. So John, sa mga marami dyan na natatakot sa chemotherapy or may maling paniniwala na yung chemotherapy ay hindi effective or lalong nakakalala. This slide shows and proves na effective ang chemotherapy for stage 4 patients. And no stage 4 patient should be deprived of the opportunity 
to give to be given chemotherapy in the hope that he may be one of those who will benefit with a little longer survival, not cure, but survival for stage four. We have also seen that radiotherapy for rectal cancer reduces local recurrence to less than 10%, meaning 90% hindi na nagkakaroon ng local recurrence pag nabigyan ng radiotherapy. So quite effective also for rectal cancer. And then, dahil meron ng maraming treatment modalities for colorectal cancer, may surgery, may chemotherapy, may radiotherapy, hindi pwedeng walang planning at walang um, uh, integration ng planning, yung, 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 ano, yung coordination ng planning. Yung multidisciplinary treatment planning, what we call MDT, has to be done para yung sequence ba ng treatment, yung timing, kung anong mauuna, etc., ay napapag-usapan at napaplano. And dito sa slide na to nakikita na yung mga pasyenteng nagkaroon ng MDT discussion bago ma 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 magamot o matreat, had less treatment failure. 8.5% lang ang treatment failure nila kaysa, kaysa sa mga hindi nagkaroon ng MDT discussion, uh, in one sense, parang kanya-kanya ang treatment. Tingnan mo yung treatment failure, 24%. So, importante yung nag-uusap-usap yung mga doktor uh, tungkol sa treatment bago nila i-treat yung pasyente. And then, because I'm a surgeon, I will talk about surgery. You know? And uh, there have been a lot of advances in colorectal cancer surgery. Yung isa dito, yung tinatawag namin anal preservation. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Um, na-pre-preserve namin yung pet. Hindi namin tinatanggal tapos permanenting, permanenting na dumundami na lang yung pasyente sa bag in the abdomen. When I was younger in my training before, more than 50% na ginagawa namin rectal cancer, tertanggal ang pet. Permanente na yung colostomy. But we have gotten better with treatment. Ngayon, balik tad. 90% of our patients, we don't need to take off the anus. We can preserve it because of better surgery. Okay? Uh, so, skill is important. Technical skill, surgical skill is important. Ngayon, Ren, we are able to do uh, minimally invasive colorectal surgery, whether endoscopic to the scope, laparoscopic through, uh, through um, TV monitor or robotic. So maraming options rin kesa sa yung dating ang laki ng hiwa ng operasyon. Ngayon, we can do it minimally invasive with very small wounds, kagaya nito. Yan lang ang peklat niya. So hindi na nakakatakot masyado yung operasyon kasi may mga minimally invasive techniques pa niya. However, some cancers in the colon and the rectum, siyempre, nag-progress or we catch them late. And so, with these advanced cancers, we can still operate in them but we have to be very aggressive, no? maximally invasive uh, surgery. Uh, and, and we have newer techniques now like cytoreduction, pelvic exenteration, liver resection and transplant, pagkumalat sa liver. Uh, we, all, we can often give now chemotherapy and radiotherapy for surgery for these big tumors. We can do hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy or intraoperative radiotherapy. So marami kaming options na rin during surgery for advanced tumor. And ito, importante sa mga kunyari may pamag-anak ko yung kailangan operahan in, for colorectal cancer or for any cancer that particular, in particular matter. I-research nyo ganong karaming kaso ang ginagawa ng surgeon na yon for that particular procedure. Kasi increasing evidence is that higher volume centers, yung maraming ginagawang ganyang klase ng operasyon, mas maganda ang outcome. Mas konti yung komplikasyon, mas napapahaba ang buhay ng pasyente. So, for surgery, in especially high volume matters, yung dami ng operasyon ng ganyang klase na ginagawa ng surgeon, importante. Okay, um, so... I think I've shown you that uh, colorectal cancer is an important cancer worldwide in the Philippines. Medyo hulipat tayo sa treatment natin kasi yung survival rates natin hindi gating ganda 
as those in uh, more developed countries. Nakita natin na uh, with good treatment, with good treatment, whether it's chemotherapy, radiotherapy, or surgery, you can cure colorectal cancer and your survival rates can be very good up to above 60%. That's how we are in the Philippines. And the AC Health Group, AC Health Corporation, now HPI, under the Ayala Group of Companies, has recognized cancer as an important um, an important uh, disease to battle. And with their mantra of always aiming for national development, uh, the Ayala Corporation to AC Health uh, has decided to set up a cancer hospital. If the first dedicated cancer hospital in the private sector for the Philippines. Uh, and it will, it's undergoing construction now, I'll tell you, I'm part of the group developing it. We just had a meeting this morning. It is on schedule to be finished on July of uh, 2023. Um, it will be located uh, uh, at Arcasau, Samitagig, very accessible uh, to those of you from DMMC as you want to go to Manila. You know? The vision of the hospital is to be the leading, well, um, for colorectal cancer, we have focused on colorectal cancer, breast, uh, um, uh, head and neck cancers, and lung cancers first, but as we develop the other programs. But we want to create centers of excellence, and the vision for the colorectal cancer center of excellence is to be the leading one in the region. And we want to be the center of our colorectal cancer hub and spoke network for offering highly specialized, cutting edge, comprehensive and value-based colorectal cancer services, research and training. And um, the colorectal cancer center of excellence um, has many, is highly specialized for colorectal cancer and has many components, which I won't go into detail, but it is a program of the cancer hospital that is also somewhat similar to the QualiMed integrated practice models or units that we are forming. So kung merong colorectal cancer center of excellence or breast cancer center of excellence or head and neck cancer of excellence, meron rin parang katumbas na programang ganyan sa QualiMed, which we call the Integrated Practice Units. No? And in QualiMed, the Integrated Practice Units are uh, neurosciences for STR, diabetes for San Jose del Monte and CHS, uh, fertility for our Iloilo Hospital, uh, for the PGH uh, Masai Faculty Medical Arts uh, Group, uh, we have cancer. For DMMC, and that is the reason why you're having this lunch ceremony today, uh, the board of HPI has decided that gastro and gastroenterologic diseases will be the integrated practice model um, uh, of um, a benchmark for DMMC. Okay, uh, so balikan ko, we've talked about the incidence of colorectal cancer and how, how prevalent it is and how, how bad our, our data is, how bad our outcomes are with regard to colorectal cancer because we need better care. I've talked to you how better care is achieved through chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and surgery. I've talked to you about our plan to develop a cancer hospital in the Philippines, the first uh, private cancer hospital institution in the Philippines. I've talked about how it, there will be a colorectal cancer center of excellence in that hospital. Our goal is to try to improve the survival of patients in the Philippines with colorectal cancer. However, prevention is better than cure. And early detection leads to easier treatment and better results. So the next question is, in, Bago magka-cancer, magka-colorectal cancer ang tao, pwede bang i-prevent siya? Is colorectal cancer preventable? 
uh, here are some tips on how to avoid colorectal cancer. Number one, eating healthy, stopping smoking, maintaining a healthy weight, adding calcium and vitamin D always on your diet, getting regular exercise, cutting down on alcohol, knowing your family background kasi kung two or more, baka at risk kayo genetically. But having said all of that, pinakita ko na sa iyo the biggest risk factor to getting colorectal cancer is age. At you, as long as you're above 45, your age, your risk increases even if you're not feeling it. Kaya importante to get screened. And when we say screening for cancer, we're, we actually mean doing tests on people who are healthy and have no symptoms. That is getting screened. Kung may sintomas ang pasyente, kagaya ng pain or bleeding or tabag, hindi screening test ang dapat gawin sa kanila. Kung de- diagnostic test, kasi we need to find out the problem. Ibang-iba yan sa screening. Sa screening, walang nararamdaman yung tao. Apparently healthy. Pero kailangan magpa-check up lang for colorectal cancer screening kasi 45 years old na siya. Tanong kasimple lang ang screening. And there are many types of screening. These are stool exam screening, the guayak based the DNA test, and the fecal immunochemical test. And I will tell you, ang problema sa guayak based na lumang style is minsan nagpa-positive dahil tumain ka ng dinuguan or vitamin C na nakakagasgas ng, ng chan. Kailangan mong fasting ka pa ng matindi para maiwasan yung false positive. So, medyo old, old style na yung guayak and we're not, we only state it, stating it here kasi iskin na hindi na masyadong ginagamit, um, yung studies that showed survival were actually done using guayak based fecal oral blood. So pati yan, baseline, may, stud, may studies to prove na effective sila as screening. Um, okay, pero we have, um, this is the more expensive test. It's not readily available sa bansa. This fecal immunochemical test of fit is similar to guayak, pero hindi guayak-based. Ito ay using antibodies to take blood in school. It's very specific for humans. So, miski kumain ang tao ng dinugaan ng galing baboy or, or vitamin C or, or ng iron sulfate siya, hindi magpa-positive yung fecal immunochemical test. Magpa-positive lang talaga yan kung may human blood na na-detect na dumaan at nandun sa dumi. So very specific. And then the cost is not expensive. It's almost the same price as guayak based fecal of hot blood. So, but by the way, a side note, no, marami dyan nagpapa-executive checkup. Siyempre, executive checkup, sama dyan yung screening for colorectal cancer. So when you look at that, dapat tingnan mo, no, may screening program nila, 45 or above na. Po. Meron ba silang fit? na stool exam lang ito pero fit ang ginagamit hindi hindi guayak based hindi ordinary stool exam fit that is one of the things or meron ba silang colonoscopy because that's the other way to screen ang advantage ng fit over colonoscopy is ito ay ginagawa lang hindi invasive hindi kailangan patulugin dahil hindi naman sakit hindi kailangan mag diet hindi ka gaya sa colonoscopy, kailangan linisin mo ng gusto yung ito ka para may makita ka. So, and then ito ay mura lang. Maybe you will not spend more than 500 pesos on this kumpara sa colonoscopy which uh, may cost up to 20,000. And then remember that colonoscopy has risk factors kasi invasive. And one of the risks is mabutas yung intestines which will require surgery. So, fecal immunochemical test is cheap it's effective, it decreases mortality by 23% in a community, uh, and it is specific for human blood. Okay. Um, why does it turn positive when 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 there's colorectal cancer? Because there might be bleeding during the when during the vacation. It looks at human blood specifically, not at uh, a horse's blood or a pig's blood which means it's more accurate to find out if the patient is bleeding. It's a very simple uh, analyzing method uh, by just collecting feces. 
its advantage is you see in there, barang pregnancy test, eh, may dipstick na pagkita mo yung resulta. Dietary restriction is not required, even for drug, drug, drug uh, prescription na uh, wag mo nang inumin. Pababa ang presyo, between 3 to 500 pesos, depending on the distributor. And the reduction of mortality for colorectal cancer. May prueba na gumaganda ang mortality for colorectal cancer. So here's again, accuracy, sensitivity, and specificity. And colonoscopy has a wide range of sensitivity, but very high specificity. And the total colonoscopy naman, sensitivity is 95 to 98 percent. But specificity is not so high. These are some of the pros and cons of colonoscopy and fit. Yung iba dyan, ayaw kunin yung dumi. So colonoscopy dyan. Ako, colonoscopy ako kasi I had some symptoms and I wanted to be free of doing another colonoscopy for the next 10 years. Kaya pinili ko yan. Pero... Kung takot kayo sa colonoscope or takot kayo sa gastos, fecal, uh, fecal occult uh, blood test like FIT is more is cheaper. It's also um, quite accurate and it results in survival advantage. Okay. Um, this is just a slide to show you how uh, colorectal cancer develops no? from a normal colon mucosa to hyper, to madami yung growth rate. Tapos naging anuma, adenoma na benign lesion na kung sakali na colonoscopy dito, baka na pick up na yan at uh, atanggal no? for cure. There's different types of adenoma before they become cancer uh, that is curable. Uh, so early stage pa yan. So ang tagal ng proseso, di ba? Uh, and then, if the cancer is still left alone, it becomes eventually a late cancer with no cancer survival. So usually may progression yan. Nagsisimala dito hanggang dyan. Hindi masyadong nagtitiwalas na biglang may colorectal cancer ang 45-year-old naman ang symptoms. Usually may symptoms na yan. And our job is to try to pick them up early for you. So in summary, among the various malignancies, colorectal cancer is one of the most preventable, curable, and screenable um, uh, cancers. No? Uh, why? You can prevent it by picking out polyps. You can cure it by doing specialized surgical techniques like uh, maximally invasive surgery or minimally invasive surgery and the like. Fit screening is the most effective way for screening as it is easy, less invasive, and low cost. Uh, wala ka lang masyadong preparasyon yung ginagay ng, ng, ng colonoscopy under a GI. However, I will admit I still refer to GI because uh, I need to sometimes look at the stomach when we do endoscopy. Colonoscopy is both diagnostic and therapeutic. May meron itong mga... Kuchilio noon na I had to uh, somewhat uh, uh, keep in a safe place uh, uh, for that. No? Um, so anyway, fit screening is the most effective way of screening as it is. And colonoscopy is both diagnostic and therapeutic. Um, and I, I think I need to take uh, before we go into the question and answer, I want to uh, go back to what we're doing with DMMC today. So we have identified DMMC to be the um, to have a center of excellence in gastroenterology and GI diseases, and we are launching the GI clinic today. And uh, kasama sa program yan is a program on doing colorectal cancer screening in the community around DMMC using FIT, this tool exam, which we will give to communities and corporations outside. Kung sakaling nag-positive ang FIT, then we will have a program for offering colonoscopy as the next step to see bakit positive ang FIT, to see whether uh, baka hemorrhoid lang ang cause ng positivity 
or baka may polyp na pwedeng tanggalin to prevent what might be a future cancer or kung sadly may cancer but hopefully curable. So that program also is in place with the GI Center of DMC to provide endoscopic services, lalo na for our, our patients who come for our screening program. And then you have to also remember that we're building a cancer hospital under the Ayala Group. And this hospital is going to be the hub or center of a hub and spoke model. Na hindi lang standalone cancer hospital ito, pero connectado with the whole system. And Qualimed, the MC, MC in particular, but the Qualimed system is part of this hub and spoke model. So, uh, the GI center of DMMC is actually going to be an integral part of the hub and spoke colorectal cancer center of excellence in the cancer hospital. Uh, we hope your screening program will, will capture a lot of early cases and you have the option to refer to the cancer hospital. We will um, provide uh, superior quality of care uh, for your patients, uh, and you can join us in treating your patient. We will offer radiotherapy or advanced chemotherapy or surgery. And then, of course, like any Hubbard spoke model, pagtapos na ang case, of course, you follow up sa pusente. Surveillance is what we call that, not screening. Screening is wala pang cancer, pero kung may cancer na for follow up, surveillance ang tawag namin dyan, we will provide surveillance services with you as the spoke in DMC, and some of those will be colonoscopy under the GI center. So that's the vision. And we're building the, the block, the, the, the building blocks so one by one. Uh, so as the cancer center is being constructed, we are already putting in one of the spokes, one of the most important spokes in the network of colorectal cancer as a center of excellence, the DMMC GI clinic. I think uh, that's the end of my lecture and I will be happy to entertain any questions. <laughs> All right, thank you, Dr. Rami, for a very informative um, uh, lecture no, on what we really want to achieve. So um, I'll open the floor uh, to anyone in the Zoom. You can just open your camera and we don't have questions in the chat box, by the way. So. Um, Ayun, sorry doc, biglang may lumabas. <laughs> Is, uh, ngayon doon sakto-sakto yung sinabi kong wala. Okay, so the question doc is, um, is fit screening available within the Qualimed network? And if so, how much is the cost of the screening compared po to colonoscopy? So I'm, okay. do you want to answer? Uh, oh yeah, uh, sige doc, but, alam niyo po ba? <laughs> so, I'll pass on to Max to for that, but I know it's less than 500 pesos ang fit. And ang fit ay uh, kukuha ka lang ng konting dumi, stool. stool Tapos, yeah. it's like a pregnancy test. Ididip nyo. Or yung parang yung antigen test ng, ng, ano, ng COVID. Ididip lang yung, um, yung may drops. Tapos makikita mo yung kung may linyang lalabas as positive. Uh, Napakasimple test. Hindi kailangan mag, mag purga Okay, it's cheap, it's easy to do. Kukuha ka lang ng dumi. And it's effective. Kaso lang, um, it only will tell you kung positive yung test o not, na kung may dugo ang, ang pasyente, ang stool mo, na microscopic bleeding o wala. Kung positive, you will need a colonoscopy. You will need a colonoscopy to find out bakit siya nag-positive. And a colonoscopy usually costs around 20 to 30,000 pesos in most hospitals. Okay? Yung colonoscopy, siyempre may preparation. Tapos under anesthesia. At may invasive. Kailangan may ipasok sa, sa anus no? para makita. So it's not a pleasant experience kaya may anesthesia. At may risk. No? May risk less than 0.1% na baka mabutas ang bituka. But that risk remains. Not like like not like fit, wala masyadong risk. Okay? So anyway, uh, with our screening program, we offer fit, we offer colonoscopy. If you don't want to do fit, kasi 
nandidiri kayo, nakukuha pa ka pa yan ng dumi sa toilet ko, pwede mag-diretsong colonoscopy which is good for 10 years. Mas mahal lang nga. No? Uh, and, and because of our screening program, we will, I think Mads uh, will better explain that later on, we have packages for colonoscopy that will be more cost effective uh, for our clients compared to the standard colonoscopy packages. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Dr. Oh, yeah. Rami. Uh, for the cost of the fit screening, so right now our introductory price is just around 200 pesos. Okay, so um, the next question was already answered also by Dr. Rashila Santana. Thank you, Pono. So um, the question was, um, will diet management no, be part po of the GI center no, in, in aiding in treating for our patients? No? So will the GI center provide the appropriate diet instruction and caloric requirement for the nutritional support of our patients? So yes, no, we will... Um, and so good ni Dr. Sheila is yes po, no? We, we have that po uh, in the center and in the hospital um, as well. So yeah, let you. me add to that. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, the, it's very good that the uh, nutrition support team you know, yes, uh, to have <laughs> nutritional needs. There is usually a question to ask about anong classing diet ang importante sa ano. Uh, to prevent colorectal cancer. And uh, we usually advise high-fiber diet. Uh, yung maraming gulay, prutas, uh, and uh, usually white meat, no? but fruits and vegetables. And, you know, there's a very funny reason we give them. Bakit? Why, why is high-fiber good? No? We eat a lot of potential carcinogenic things, no? like barbecue. Yung huling ng barbecue, pwede carcinogenic yan, no? Ngayon, if you eat a lot of high fiber, gumaganda ang galaw ng bituka and nagpa-pass out better yung, yung kinain natin. So if you eat a lot of carcinogenic or potentially carcinogenic food, it passes out faster kaysa sa ma-maintain ma ma ng mas patagal sa dilat. And I always tell my medical student, and this one I did my, my thesis research noon pa, uh, I always ask them, what? If you look at an animal kung saan mas kaitsura yung bituka ng hayop na yon kaysa sa human colon, anong hayop yon? Is it the dog? Is it the cat? The monkey? Uh, uh, the pig? What, what animal has a colon that looks like the humans? And you will be surprised to find out it's the cow. The cow has a colon similar to humans. Uh, in the way it's constructed. So that only means our colons are better made uh, and better for function uh, with high fiber. I have to say though that there, there's something, uh, there's an exception to high fiber. May mga cancer patients na kami na may bukol na sa pituka at may konting bara na at malapit na magbara. And for that, we tell them, wag ka na muna mag fiber kasi with high fiber, your stools might become more formed baka magbara lalo, no? baka magclog. So we tell them, kung may bukol na ganyan, in the meantime, hindi ka pa na-operahan, hindi ka pa nag-radiotherapy and all, mag-low-fiber diet ka. High calorie, para maganda ang pro yung protein at saka yung nutritional upbuilding, but low-fiber para ma-absorb ka agad and not form too much food. Pag natanggal na ang bukol, balik sa high-fiber. Okay? Okay, thank you for that info, <laughs> that information, Dr. Ramites. Anyone who have any other questions at this time? Oh, raise ng hand, wala na po. <laughs> so if, uh, I think po, no, nagahabul din tayo, so we can, um, we can end, no? So with any Dr. Rami will, We'll end for our uh, webinar for today. We would like to thank everyone for um, joining us. No, so I believe uh, before we all leave and proceed to the our inauguration, no, may we hear a few words from our medical director, Dr. Conrad de Malaluan. Hello, uh, good afternoon, everybody. 
Uh, thank you everybody for attending this uh, webinar. Thank you, Dr. Rami, huh, for sharing uh, this very informative lecture. Um, yes, uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are very proud that uh, we are starting the uh, GI Center today and we have the screening test that Dr. Rami is uh, talking about earlier. Yung pinakamura na fit na, as Sir Mags mentioned, it's around 200 plus. So um, there's no excuse actually to not to screen and not to detect this very, um, I would like to say, very curable and very manageable, potentially um, deadly disease if only we get it from the start. So Without further ado, thank you very much, everybody, for attending. And uh, we are asking our doctors and everybody else to please help us um, promote this GI Center, promote the screening to everybody that you know, so that we will be able to save more lives as we go along and do our service to all the Filipino people. So thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Dr. Ami. Thank you, Marla. Cancer. It arises from the transformation of normal cells into tumor cells. Colorectal cancer is the third leading cause of all cancers in the Philippines. One out of every 100 Filipinos would have colorectal cancer before the age of 75. Unfortunately, early colon cancer is a symptom. But what if you don't know if you have early stage colorectal cancer? What if you're just ignoring the signs and symptoms? Abdominal pain, anemia, unexpected weight loss, and changes in bowel movement. Anxiety may set in, then despair, and hopefully it will not be too late. TMMC has been in the business of saving lives for the past 64 years. Now, as we launch the DMMC Gastrointestinal Center, we are putting all our efforts in providing for the ever-changing needs and demands of our patients. We are able to serve you with state-of-the-art equipment. The first fibro scan in Batangas to detect liver abnormalities. Top-of-the-line gastroscope and colonoscope towers to diagnose gastrointestinal tumors in ulcers. We are a team of highly qualified and dedicated physicians and medical staff who have always been by our patient side as we heal them and take care of their medical needs. Our fit screening has a high detection rate of colorectal cancer such that it detects the potential 10 to 20% of colorectal cancer from all that has been screened. Together with colonoscopy, the accuracy of the screening sensitivity and specificity of colorectal cancer is greatly increased, pinpointing the actual cause of the disease. In fact, this effective screening decreases the mortality rate of colorectal cancer by 2% every year. Call this dedicated hotline for your gastrointestinal concern. You can stay where you are when you don't even know if you are at risk or actually has colorectal cancer. Or you can go to DMMC GI Center and have a safer and healthier life.